Party people, Rock the House, what's happening? Welcome back, finally back to another episode of the world's greatest music podcast, Smoke em If You Got Em. I'm stoked to be doing this again after some storms that were coming and then they didn't come and then friends that were here and yada yada, but now we're back. And today we're going back to a wild card. Now the premise of the show stays forever the same. You have to have two numbers rolled for this, okay? We're going to smoke it, we're going to listen we're going to talk about it. We're going to flip that record over, smoke it, talk about it, listen to it. Or something like that. I'm already I'm already like too deep myself. But for today's wild card choice, and as usual, the good music that keeps you hip, I pass the microphone on to the Oracle of Oxford County. Ladies and gentlemen, today we will listen to Agharta. Self-titled, very easy to find. Now, don't get confused with the Egg Harta by Miles Davis, which is also great. Uh, this is Egg Harta uh, from 1980. It is a Canadian band. And our last uh, edition of Smoke If You Got On, we talked about the band that sort of sound like Mavish and Orchestra, correct? Yeah, we're talking about Fusion. That was Prosper. Yeah. And this band is the van- band that sounds like Weather Report. Now, don't get it twisted. I don't even want, before we even get into this journey, I don't want you saying, well, they're not as good as Weather Report. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> no band's as good as Weather Report. I got that. I understand the concept that, yes, no one is better than Wayne Shorter, Joe Zawinul, and Jogma Stories in the same band. That's a tough band to top. What I'm that's telling the, you that's people is this band reminds me of Weather Report, okay? And they're right. that Jeez. That is the most impressive. That they are... A Canadian band, 1980. But this is the wild card today, and obviously we're we're on fire. So I'm ready to listen to this thing now. The deal is, you got to drop what you're doing, as the Oracle always states. Let the hose alone. Drop Instagram for for damn second, man. We're just listening to music. Put the phone down. Now we know the phone is a part of our being now. It's the first step into the matrix. But we're gonna fight it for a little while. We're gonna listen to some old music this is some fusion uh which is you know prog it's a relative of prog you know it's it, it, interesting it, it's in the prog archives like it's under a category so i'm saying it's prog oh yeah no this this totally counts uh so you know that's the deal we're, we're gonna do it hey, hey by the way we never said that this was just uh, exclusively a prog podcast we've never no we never did we, we never, never did we never said that so 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 we're just teaching the folks here the fine folks let us just smoke them if you got them. Intelligent. So, intelligent. This is one of the most uh, handsome audiences of all time. By the way, if you haven't caught any of the episodes that we're talking about, go on the catalog. You can check it all out over there. But in the meantime, do it to it, brother. Do it to smoke it. Smoke if you got them. Party people rock the motherfucking house. This caught me off guard. Please, what are we listening to? Agharta. What, from what, the hell, what the hell does that mean? What, what does Agharta mean? Did you know? I do know what Agharta means. Tell me, please. So, you know what Pangea is, correct? Yes, sir. So, when the, when it was the supercontinent, when it was one, mm-hmm. well, when it broke in two, it was Agharta. Oh, interesting. That's why Miles Davis, the album Pangea and Agharta, right? So. There you go, folks. See, we, we teach you about everything, not just music. This is culture. Damn. That could be a lie also, what I just told everyone, but I'm pretty sure it's right. Who cares? It's, <laughs> it's out there. It's real. I believe it. Everybody else should believe it, too. I'm going to fact so, check myself after the episode. How's that, folks? Uh, who cares? We're not going to edit it. So if you believe no. it, good for you. Um, yeah. Hate on me, please. This uh, this caught me off guard. I... Uh, a because it doesn't sound like a Canadian band whatsoever, and Can we B speak on that? for and, real, yeah, and and uh, well, you don't expect a bunch of white people from the Great White North to come down with uh, a swing that's not uh, European sounding. You know, it's got a lot of that. See, this is a weird time. Can you talk about track two, please. That's my favorite on the side. That is that is my. That's what made me turn over. On did the you side. Dig, 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 get, dig, get down on that one? I mean, oh. good lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The bass, the drums, out of control. That was like Herbie Hancock-ish. 
One hundred percent. I thought it was. It sounded like Herbie Hancock during this particular time. Now, uh, who's that Carta? Because we got to figure out these players before we keep talking about them. Because they're so good. So we got Michelle Seguin on percussion, uh, Norman Catafard on drums, Jacques Mignou on keyboards. That's the guy whose band it is. Mm-hmm. Norman Trudel on bass, and Pierre Vigneault on sax. This is all Quebec, Quebecois. French uh, musicians from Canada. So, again, that 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 lost sort of unknown history of Canada. It's crazy because I, I, you know, we talk about music all the time. We've never talked about this band that we, it, I, you know, most people don't think about fusion and would think about Canada. Now, this this obviously this was a Canadian label that put it out. The record came out in Canada, and it stayed local. Correct. How about uh, it's uh, self released? Nice. Yep. Nice. Keyboard players own out uh, own label. There so, you go. Great. And and it's affordable. We we usually jump we jump at the gum, but uh, I saw an a mint sealed copy for fifty bucks Canadian online. So it's affordable. Wow. Folks. That's an affordable record for for a self. You know, it's funny. We go from uh, we were doing for thousands of dollars. Yeah, we yeah, and and also uh, it's because it's so subjective, right? What we're talking about here is great music, and great music has nothing to do with the price of the album. It's about the uh, amount of copies, the limitations of it. But musically speaking, uh, you, my brother, you spoke some truth. This is this is uh, the closest thing you can get to somebody that just sit all day and listen to her be in weather report. Right. And, and recording quality wise too, it's, it's, it is of that ilk. It is such well recorded that yeah. it reminds me of a weather report album, you know, 100%. It has that. Uh, so th- this is right at the edge of where music started getting shitty in terms of yeah. quality because of the production. Uh, there's a lot of digital sound, in this uh, recording and, and you know what I'm talking about, but there's still warmness cause it's 1980. Uh, but this is the borderline of the instruments becoming very thin in frequency and losing power. So it didn't matter how good you were of a player, the sound of it just turned you off. This is still very warm, uh, which is interesting to say for a Canadian band. And, and there's a lot of different uh, sounds on the, on the first whole side, right? The, there was a lot of different types of, of, music i'd say the first first song probably the one i dislike the most it's just a little bit too light the flute playing the first one the first one's got this new age vibe very vangelis very uh i i was worried i thought right we we're going into a low flame uh and then that kicks up on two right i agree now anything, the, the else one... you liked on, anything else that stood out for you on side one yes uh that i couldn't find anything that would tie this band in my ears to canada <laughs> what did you think of the of the of the uh semi like caribbean song after part two so, so uh, you know for that one it's hard for me to judge because me being a percussionist and right. being puerto rican uh, i understand where they were trying to go the the one for the percussion player is not where it should be but it serves the song right so it feels really floaty it feels lighthearted. i want to have some margaritas and enjoy the playing you know the bass player sounds killer in that track right right like that's the thing i even with the tracks i didn't like there was playing in it that i liked yeah things stood out that just really the bass playing overall is unbelievable in this album yeah yeah and uh and it, and it proves it really well uh it it I, I, let's let's flip this over because you know yeah we, there's more there's more yeah there's more to do it uh g- give the folks the info while we're listening and then uh let them know what got to go Listen to Agharta, and you got to uh, roll that other one up, have it ready, and let's let's smoke them if you got them right. Let's go, listen to side two, folks. I do have it. All right, guys, let's go. Let's go then. <laughs> I can barely feel my face. Woo. I'll be hosting the second side of Smoke Figon, folks. This is take, take Oracle, away, Oxford County. 
used to have a co-host named G.I. Alamo. I'm here, I swear. Lost a lung <laughs> along the way. See, we're listening we, to we we all we all agree on what we do here, and I'm sitting here with you guys. This is just that's right. bullshit. So no, I'm back. I'm here. Kicked out, no problem. Agharta. Agharta. Which 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 means the uh division of Pangea into two parts, so that's some heavy ass shit. But the music is not. The music is very pleasant. What was your and favorite I, part here? I dig the first song a lot. Very different Soy. than the opening on the side. Cosmic. Yeah. So, it's cosmic. Yeah. And I like Big Sur is like the show off song. That's probably there, my favorite. There, that's my favorite on this album too. You know what's really funny? We've listened to so many records uh, over over 35 albums and we've had different opinions on songs. This album that I thought when I first put it down on first opinion, right first track, I was like, oh, this is going to be a task to get through. We like the exact same songs. Yeah. Because they're great songs. Correct. And, and, and again, even this, like I said, the stuff that I, that I would don't like that much, there's still good playing in it and good. There's a, good there's a lot it. of light in the stuff that even is seems because in, because in the scope of things, even in the opener of the, of the A side, with listening to the music you've heard to up to this point, that opening makes sense. But going into it cold, you're like, ah. But at yeah. this point, I can appreciate it. So, yeah, like you're saying, there's always something good in here. Um, tell us, uh, so this band is, the keyboard player runs it. This yeah. This is his band. And I thought about it like, now obviously this is like, hmm. A work of love, a work of love. It's because because he put it out his own his own uh, label. Yeah. So you really want it out because you're now financially involved. Besides the music and the time, you're putting it all in. It's interesting to me because of the the sound is so different, and there's sort of these definite songs like this is a style of this music, this style of this music. It almost all, sounds like a sampler. It, yes, it's almost like I'm selling. This is my band. We can do anything. Like do somebody, anything. somebody sign us. And let's go. I agree. That's a great point to make. It really does sound like a business card pre- presentation, but it doesn't lack soul. You know, like it's no, no, no. Th- this is love. Soul. It's, yeah, it's this love, is the right? Real deal, yeah. But to me, like they're they're basically saying, "Hey, we can make a whole sort of Herbie Hancock album if you wanted." Yeah, we can give you Herbie. We can give you Wayne. Right, it'll right, be a little, right. It'll be a little cheaper, and we can sell really out good. completely. We can sell out completely with a you know. Let's go. Let's make some money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Let's open no. up. Let's open up for Russ Ferrante and just make some cash. There you go. Now we're talking about diversify. Get yourself some chains and shit. No, I, I. I like. Uh, I like what this band is presenting. Um, is surprising, there any correct? History? It's super surprising. Is there any history about this band? No, the, the, the percussions that you didn't like is the only successful one. <laughs> Well, you know, I can't hate on that. I'm just saying, you know, just because it didn't fit them. See, the the reason why it was, uh, it's it's just so uh, awkward to hear a rhythm that you naturally. Uh, it's like, you know, in the stadium, they're singing a song and everybody's clapping the same beat, and this there's one dude, three or four people, whether it's just doing it the opposite way. That's yeah. how it feels in my ear. So it's very jarring. Yeah. But you know. I try to kick that off and just think about it the other way, but everything else that was presented by the percussion player was great, you know. The uh, I think it, it's one of those things like how many percussionists were around at the time, you know, that were in in Quebec and they were available. That's what I'm saying in Quebec doing this music, right? So yeah, to me it's incredible. Guys. And then yeah, yeah. the uh, the star of the show to me is the bass player and the drummer. Again, we we always have good drummers. We very rarely. Very rarely do we have uh, shitty drummers. Uh, there was there's a this drummer had a tendency that uh, really stood out to me. Um, the hi hat. I don't know if it's based on the recording. The hi hat's really loud in the mix, and there are times that I kind of forgot about it halfway through or switch patterns. But that's just bullshit. That's my own bullshit. Uh, you know, uh, overall it was great playing and it made a great service for the songs. You know. Yeah, he he put a lot of like uh, left hand sort of funkiness in there too oh so i mean you know that these songs were written uh late to mid 70s they got that mid 70s funk swing and uh and you know it just it feels real good every every tempo here uh is kind of resting heartbeat nothing is aggressive nothing shakes you out of your place it's a journey that you go with them 
where are we uh, going to go tomorrow on our journey? We're going to Germany, we're England, Italy, uh, Japan. We're going to go another wild card. Where are we going? You know, let's do another wild card because this wild card was so damn good. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Another wild card, folks. Where will we go? No one knows. But it'll yeah, be good. Exactly. I promise you that. It's always it's always good, man. Even it's like it's very much like this album. So uh yo, if you, anybody catches this record out there in some flea market or vinyl exchange, cop that. Because it's anybody, gonna be real good. Did anybody help us with uh, Korean Prague yet? Nobody has stepped up, but I, you know, I looked around and you weren't kidding when you said that it was hard to find information on <laughs> Korean Prague. I, I will say, I will say this and I'll, and I'll put our work over, but that particular episode and, and that video that we have on the YouTube page and on the Facebook page, people are really going towards it because there is so little information. Like we might have given them the most information condensed into one place. So don't be missing out on it. Go and check it out on Facebook or on YouTube, and you'll see it. It's, it's right up there, man. Does anyone know a Korean person? Nobody knows Korean per- people. It's true. I, I meet a lot of Japanese people and Chinese. Now they're probably lying about being Chinese. They're like, you know, oh, well, I'm from Taiwan, but... Yeah, well, yeah. I, it's, the a lot, it's the time. I had a lot, I had a lot of Korean friends out in uh, California, so if any of our Korean friends out in California listening to this and have any, this the thing is none of them listen to this. So this music, not us. Cause we're, we're, we're fucking great. So, uh, but yeah, I, uh, this has been great. It's good to be back. Good form of the great record. Can't wait for tomorrow. We'll catch you then. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs>